As a data scientist or data engineer, the thing that you interact the most with on your computer, besides the display of course, are the peripherals. So it makes sense to put some focus on them. Let's talk about keyboards. Hi, I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe and I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years and I switched to data science and data engineering about four years ago. And I'm here to share a few little things that I picked up along the way with you. So keyboards, hmm? Not the most exciting topic, I guess. But once you dive into it, you will notice that there are a whole lot of differences. So why I'm talking about keyboards? Well, I got myself two new keyboards and I would like to check out with you whether they are good and how they compare with the other keyboards that I already have. So there are two main categories of keyboards, mechanical keyboards and the non-mechanical keyboards. So the main difference between those two are that on the mechanical keyboards, as the name suggests, the key presses are registered using spring mechanism, which is a mechanical mechanism, right? And uh, on the non-mechanical keyboards, a membrane is used with rubber feet that press down against some yeah, circuits or electronic parts that then register the key presses. Maybe you've seen something like that when you had an old calculator where you pulled the keys out and then underneath there were those tiny rubber feet and you saw the uh, circuit board where the presses were registered. You can imagine something like that in the non-mechanical keyboards. So the non-mechanical keyboards are usually more on the affordable side of things, but this is not a hard rule because there are also very good non-mechanical keyboards. For example, the Logitech MX Keys, which is very good, but also it's not that cheap. The mechanical keyboards are usually more on the expensive side of things and there are plenty of variation with different base plates, different types of switches, silent switches, tactile switches and different types of keycaps and so on and so forth. So it's a whole new world to explore if you that nerdy and into those kind of things. And many people, me included, prefer mechanical keyboards. So the keyboards that we will be talking about are mechanical keyboards. Enough talking about keyboards in general. Let's have a look at the two keyboards that I have here. Those keyboards are bare bone kits and you need to assemble them yourself. So it's Lego time, I guess, yeah. But before we start with that, a short reminder to go completely insane on that like button. That would really help me out. So the kit consists of three parts, the base plate, the switches and the keycaps. And you need to assemble them yourself as I said. The keyboards are from a company called Glorious and I purchased them with my own money. They aren't cheap. Each of those cost me about 200 euros, but the nice thing is that you can spec them out exactly how you would like to have them. For example, I got myself the pre-looped Holy Panda switches that have a rather high trigger point, which prevents accidental key presses because you need some more force to actually press the key down. Also, I went for a smaller keyboard because I usually don't use the num block and I prefer to have more space on my desk. Depending on the location where you live and the keyboard layout that you use, it might be hard to find mechanical keyboards that support that specific layout. Since I live in Germany, I prefer to have a German ISO layout, which includes things like the German umlauts and things like that. But since most mechanical keyboards are created using the US ANSI keyboard layout, yeah, it's not that easy to find very good keyboards with the German ISO layout. I guess that the market for those layouts isn't as big, so the manufacturers don't really care about it that much. The same holds unfortunately true for keycaps. It's hard to find very good keycaps with the uh, keyboard layout that you need. I decided to go with PBT keycaps and there are many different variations of keycaps. The main difference is um, the shape of the keycap and also the material it's out of. Now that we've talked about the parts of the keyboard and the keyboards are actually assembled, what do I think about them and how do they compare with the keyboard that I'm currently using? First, I have to say that I like the non-pro version a bit better than the pro version actually. And the reason for that is it looks sleeker on the desk and also the surface is smooth. The pro version has a 
bit of a structured surface and when I rub my finger against it, then it actually removes the skin from my, from my finger. So yeah, maybe this will get soft um, over time with use, but yeah, right now it's kind of not that nice. and I try my best to show it to you in the video, but not sure whether you will be able to see it. That being said, the sound when pressing a key is, I would say, about 15% more satisfactory or satisfying, that's the word, uh, on the Pro than on the non-Pro. The sound is a more thick thong sound. I don't know how to explain it, but you will see in the video. And yeah, so the sound while typing actually is a bit nicer on the pro version. Maybe it's due to the higher mass of the base plate, maybe there is better dampening inside of the base plate of the pro version. Not sure what causes it, but yeah, as I said, the sound is a bit nicer on the pro version. So now that we have seen how those two glorious keyboards compare with each other, how do they compare with other keyboards? Let's take my current daily keyboard, the Keychron K8 with red switches. First I have to say that I don't really like the red switches because the key pressure point is a bit too low for my taste. So while I'm typing, there are many accidental key presses happening. Also I have to say that the two glorious keyboards feel much more premium than the Keychron K8 that I'm currently using. The main thing is that those are out of metal and they feel nicer, but I also think that there is a metal version of the Keychron, but I guess it was sold out when I ordered mine, so I only have the plastic version to compare the glorious keyboards to. The nice thing about the Keychron is that it supports Bluetooth, and that's the main reason why I went for it when I ordered it. But to be honest, I still use it with a cable. And why is that? Because for yeah, whatever reason, maybe design choice, uh, the keyboard goes to sleep after not being used for a while. And so when I go away from the computer and then I come back, I want to type something, but then I notice that the first part of the word is missing or the whole first word is missing because the keyboard first needs to wake up and then just starts to register your key presses. And that was a bit annoying for me. And so, yeah, I just use it with a cable and then there's no wake up, going to sleep uh, issues occurring anymore. And yeah, it's just a bit less annoying and makes life a bit easier for me. Okay, maybe to not bore you to death, let's go with one more keyboard. And that one is the drop control, I guess it's called. Or, or, or drop old or control. One of those two, <laughs> not sure. I should have prepared, but eh, whatever. So I spec them out with Kali white box switches. And those switches are clicky switches and those are my favorite clicky switches ever. I much prefer them over this, over the typical MX Blue switches because the click is so much finer. It almost feels like there is a tiny plate of glass inside every switch and when you press it, this glass breaks. It's, ah, it, it, it feels so good. So I highly recommend that you check those out. It is also the reason why I wanted to include this keyboard in this comparison. The build and everything is super solid about this keyboard and actually it would be kind of one of my dream keyboards. The only thing that is really bad for me is that it has an ANSI layout. As I said, it's hard to get keyboards with a German ISO layout. And so this one was made for the American market and has an ANSI layout. And therefore, yeah, I tend not to use it even though everything else is super good about it. So if you happen to live in the US, this keyboard is by the way, I think all the keyboards also support RGB and stuff like that. But yeah, since I don't care that much about this, I'm not gonna comment on it. So I guess the video is already pretty long and let's wrap things up. So the glorious keyboards are super good and I think that I will, for at least for now, drive the non-pro version because I just like the look more and put the pro version to my workstation at home that I don't use that often as the one in the in the office. Maybe after some time I will switch them, but that being said, both keyboards are super nice and I'm really happy about my decision getting them. So if you watched the video up until this point, you might also consider going completely nuts on that like button and also maybe leave a comment down below and tell me what keyboard you are using. And yeah, so far, see you in the next video.